Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. If you like to build or repair guitars, I suggest you click that subscribe button down below, and you'll become part of a community of fellow luthiers, and together, we can take your skills to a whole new level. If you'd like to support my guitar building YouTube channel, visit eGuitarPlans.com and buy a plan. A link is in the description below. Now on with the video. Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. In this episode, I'll be covering part 23 of the Laminated Top Guitar Build. We're almost done. In fact, what I'm going to be covering in this episode is the final setup for this guitar. So let's jump in and get started. Okay, so the first thing I've got to do is tune the strings to pitch. And I'm not going to be too concerned at this point with how accurate my tuning is. I just want to get them tuned enough to where the strings are putting some tension on the neck. And then that way I can check the straightness of the neck. And I can do this with a notch straight edge so that I can look to see if there's any sort of relief that's occurring roughly around uh, the ninth fret and I'll do this with my notch straight edge and what I'll do is I'll, I'll typically grab a, uh, a feeler gauges and I'll check to see what kind of gap I have at that ninth fret and if necessary I'll adjust the truss rod because what I'm trying to shoot for is uh, roughly about uh, 0 0.01 inches of relief right there at that ninth fret. Um, and that's about as far as I'll go. And you'll notice that the neck is unsupported at this point because I don't want any support to affect how I read that um, neck relief. And with the neck relief set, I can now start to do a more thorough tuning, which will also involve setting the intonation for each string. In the last episode, I mentioned how I set the action while I was making the nut. However, when you start to adjust intonation by moving the bridge saddles back and forth, you can change the action. So it's necessary, once the guitar has been intonated, to revisit checking the uh, action. And then I may have to make some adjustments, which of course means I'll have to go back in and adjust the intonation. It's kind of a back and forth process. However, each time you go back and forth, the adjustments you make are smaller and smaller. And then what I like to do is adjust the pull pieces on the humbuckers so that they are uh, mimicking the radius of the strings. And once that's done, I can press the low E string and the high E string down to the 24th fret and check to see what kind of clearance I have between the bottom of the string and each pickup. And if necessary, I can either raise or lower the pickups to get them as close as possible without actually touching the string and preventing the possibility of string buzz. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and play each string at each fret all the way up and down the neck. And I'm gonna do this acoustically because that helps me to hear problems uh, with respect to string buzz and uh, fretting out and that sort of thing. So I'll play each string at each fret and if I hear a problem what I can do is stop and grab my uh, fret rocker and check to see where the offending spot is on which fret. And this takes a little bit of experience, but when you start to hear that buzz, you know you've got a high spot on a fret somewhere up on the fretboard. And as you get close to it, that buzz begins to diminish and you know you're close to the fret. So at that stage, you can grab the rocker and start checking frets. And if you find a high spot, what you can do is stop and then mark it with a Sharpie so that later on, I can go back in and address that high spot. Yeah. 
After finding two or three high spots on two or three frets, I decided to go ahead and remove the strings so that I could more easily uh, spot level those uh, issues without having the strings in the way. And the technique I use for spot leveling is just to simply grab a fretboard protector and my three corner file. And I'll start working just the spot where I noticed uh, a little bit of a hump. And then I'll check it as I'm uh, doing the leveling with my fret rocker, because you have to be really careful here. If I reduce too much of the fret, it could cause low spots or high spots in adjacent frets. So it's sort of a what happens on one fret can happen on the other. And here you can see as I'm checking it with a fret rocker at that end of the fret, there's a bit of a high spot. It's right where I marked it with a Sharpie. So what I'll do is I'll grab my three corner file and I'll just work on the top of the fret in that spot periodically stopping to check my progress with the fret rocker. And once it stops rocking, I'm done. And once that spot's level, I can use my same three corner file to recrown the fret just in that area. After recrowning the uh, fret, I'll polish out the scratches with synthetic steel wool, just as I did back in episode 21. Normally to buff out the frets, I would mask off the entire fretboard and then just take it to my buffing machine and in seconds I'd have the frets completely polished to a mirror-like shine. However, for this video, I wanted to show how you can get the same technique and the same results using just a simple Dremel and some metal polishing compound. The results will be exactly the same as if I used a big buffing machine. It'll just take a little bit longer. Once all the frets have been buffed out, I'll wipe down the surface of the fretboard with some uh, odorless mineral spirits. And this is just to get rid of some of the crud that was built up during the uh, leveling, crowning, polishing, and buffing process. And while the mineral spirits is still wet, I'm gonna wipe down the surface with a little bit of boiled linseed oil. I'll let the oil soak into the wood for several hours, and then later on, I'll wipe off the excess. And while the BLO is soaking into the rosewood, I'm gonna go ahead and fabricate one last piece of this guitar that I need to make before I can call it finished, and that's the truss rod cover. So I'll sketch out the basic design on a piece of scrap rosewood. Then I'll take it to my bandsaw and slice off that design just thick enough or a little bit thicker than uh, the final cover will need to be. Then I'll cut it to the shape that I want using the bandsaw. And once that's done, I can begin the process of sanding it down to a nice smooth finish. And I'll start with about an 80 grit and then work my way all the way up to about a 400 grit sandpaper. It'll only take a few minutes to do this since the part is so small. Of course, we can't forget to drill the mounting holes. Since this truss rod cover was made out of such a thin piece of wood, I thought it would be a good idea to use a finish that will not only seal it and make it look nice, but would also perhaps beef up the strength a little bit. So I'm going to use some Z-Poxy finishing resin and hopefully that'll soak a little bit into the wood and kind of give it a little extra strength.
All right, guys. Well, that's all the time I have for this episode. And at this point, this guitar is done, finished, finito. And really all I have left to do is I'm going to set the guitar aside for about a month. Let it breathe. Let it mellow. Actually, what's going to happen is, is the guitar is going to get used to being under string tension. Uh, the neck will settle in and I can revisit it in about a month. Check the neck relief. Check the action at the 12th fret. Tune it and intonate it. Make sure everything is dialed in just right. Then what I'll do is I'll take off these setup strings. I'll give the guitar a final buff. Get it nice and polished and shiny. Put on some fresh strings. And at that point, it'll be ready to put up for sale. Now, whether or not I'm going to put it up for sale right away is kind of undecided. I have a few other guitars that I might uh, put up and you know, I may put everything all up at once. So we'll just we'll just see how that goes. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to think about the next project. And I'm not really sure exactly what it is I'm going to be doing in the next few episodes. I have a couple of ideas. Um, in fact, it, might, it may not even be in another guitar build. It may be, well, I don't want to give it away just yet. Uh, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Suffice to say, though, I think you'll find it interesting, especially if you like to make your own pickups. At any rate, uh, if you have any comments or questions, be sure to post them down below. If you enjoy building guitars or watching videos about building guitars and repairing guitars and maintaining and modifying and all that kind of stuff, I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel if you don't already. And if you like this channel and want to see me continue to put videos, head over to my eGuitarPlans.com webpage and purchase a plan. They aren't that expensive. You don't even have to build the guitar. I also offer plans for the buffing machine, the drum sander, flip top tool stands, my CNC machine, the pickup winder, uh, and there'll be some more things that I uh, am thinking about adding into the future. But if you purchase one of those plans, you're really helping to support the channel and keep me posting up these videos because I don't make a lot of money from YouTube. So every little bit helps. At any rate, until the next episode, take care and I'll see you soon. <laughs>